here with Leaving Lizards Reptile Experience. And in our last video, we talked about living versus non-living things. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of the most common living things that you can think of, which are animals. Like I said, there are over 8.5 million different species of things on this planet that are living. So let's talk about a few of the most commonly thought of living things, animals. Now, there are a few classifications of animals, including mammals, fish, birds, reptiles, and amphibians. I'll tell you a little bit about each classification and why they're so cool and why they're considered that type of animal. Let's start with mammals. Mammals are amazing advanced creatures like humans. The first characteristic of a mammal is that it has a backbone. So an animal that has a backbone is called a vertebrate. It is warm blooded, which means that they can make their own heat. So whether it's really, really hot outside or it's really, really cold, warm blooded animals like humans have body temperatures that are always about the same from about 97 to 104 degrees. We have hair or fur. We have live birth and produce milk to feed our young. Mammals also have more complex brains than other animals. A few examples are humans, cats, dogs, monkeys, whales, dolphins, and bats. Now our second classification of animal are birds. So what makes an animal a bird? Now this is another warm blooded animal that has a backbone or a vertebrate. They have feathers, they lay eggs, and they have beaks. Birds are so important to our lives. They control the populations of insects because birds love to eat bugs. They also pollinate plants. Now birds love flowers that have what is called nectar, which is basically a sugary sweet way deep down inside. When the bird tries to reach the nectar, the pollen on the flower, which is usually a fine yellow dust that is needed to make new plants, sticks to their heads, their back, their neck, and their wings. When the bird moves to another flower, some of that pollen that they just got stuck all over themselves rubs off onto the flower's stigma, which allows fertilization to occur. So we will talk more about plants and all of their amazing parts and the ways they produce new plants in another video here soon. So watch for that if you love plants. Birds also disperse seeds, which means they can actually drop seeds and make new plants. When they eat fruit, they digest what we think of as being the good part of the fruit and they pass out the seeds in their droppings or their poop. So basically poop falls from the sky and lands on the ground and then those seeds that they just pooped out become new plants. The way birds carry pollen to different plants and drop seeds in different areas help brand new plants grow all over. Some birds like the California condor are scavengers, which means that they eat dead things, which is great for us because when we go out hiking, we don't have to see a bunch of dead stuff laying around. <laughs> Some birds like the albatross can sleep while flying. Owls have 360 degree vision and woodpeckers can peck 12,000 times per day with tongues that act as safety devices for their brains and shock absorbers at the base of their beaks that cushion their brain from the pecking impact. Where would we be without birds? I don't even want to think about it. Now our third classification are fish. Now what is a fish? Fish are cold blooded animals. Now cold blooded means that they cannot regulate their own body temperature. So they need some place nice and warm if they want to warm up and they need some place shady and cool if they want to get cooler. Now fish are aquatic animals, which means they live in the water. Aquatic means water and they have backbones. Now, do you remember what a animal that has a backbone is called? A vertebrate. Very good. Gold star for you. Now fish have fins and tails that they use for swimming through the water. They don't have fingers or toes or legs or arms. They have gills for breathing underwater and scales that cover their body. Now the scales help their bodies stay protected and also help them move smoothly through the water. Fish have lived on earth for over 450 million years. Yeah, 450 million years. They can be found in rivers, lakes, oceans, warm springs, cold Arctic seas, and even underground caves. And finally, we are to my favorite types of animals, 
reptiles. Now we talk a lot about reptiles, so I'll make this section short, but reptile is a cold-blooded vertebrate. They're usually dry skinned, they have scales covering their bodies, they breathe air, and they mostly lay eggs to have their babies. There are some species, however, that actually lay their eggs inside their body, the eggs hatch inside their body, and they give birth to live young. Some of those would be blue tongue skinks, boa constrictors, and things like rattlesnakes. And the final type of animal that I'm gonna talk about today is an amphibian. Amphibians are cold-blooded vertebrates that actually can live on the land and in the water. They have a really cool skin, usually that lacks scales but has glands. Their skin is thin and actually allows them to breathe and absorb water. Whereas our lungs play a very important part in our ability to breathe, their skin is actually their most important breathing organ. Many amphibians have very complex life cycles that begin underwater as tadpoles. They later develop lungs so they can breathe and move around on land, and we'll talk about life cycles next. The word amphibian actually comes from the Greek word amphibios, which means living a double life. Examples of amphibians include frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders. So now that we know a little bit about different types of animals, I think we'll end this video here. And the next video, we will pick up with animal adaptations, animal traits, animal characteristics of all different types of animals. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on Facebook or Instagram at Leaping Lizards Reptile. See you next time.